what is Lagrange point 2? For a system of two massive objects, for example Sun and Earth, one way heavier than the other, such that the lighter one, that is Earth, orbits around the heavier one in a circular orbit, there exists a circular orbit at which if you place a satellite of relatively lower mass, the satellite orbits the center of mass of the two body system in sync with the lighter object, that is Earth in this example. And the center of mass of the two body system is nothing but the center of the heavier object, that is Sun. That makes sense. But why is it called Lagrange point 2? Why is 2 there? Well, because in such a system of two massive bodies, there are actually five such synchronous orbits possible. So how can we calculate this Lagrange point 2? That is, how can we find out the position of this orbit relative to the two bodies, that is Sun and Earth? Let's see. Say the mass of the Sun is capital M and the Earth of mass small m is located at a distance r1 from the Sun and is moving with velocity v1. And say the satellite is located at a distance d from the Earth and has mass m dash and is moving with velocity v2. Let's start by assuming that mass of the Sun is way greater than mass of the Earth is way way greater than mass of the satellite. As a consequence of that, the satellite will have no appreciable influence on the Sun Earth system, making it evolve in time almost unaffected by the satellite. So for the Sun Earth system, in order for the Earth to orbit in a circle around the Sun, centrifugal force on Earth must equal gravitational force on it, which gives mv1 square by r1 is equal to g capital M small m by r1 square, neglecting the influence of m dash of course. Solving for v1 gives v1 is equal to under root g capital M by r1, which is nothing but the orbital velocity of earth. Let's call it equation 1. Now for the satellite to orbit the center of mass of sun earth system in a circle the net gravitational force on it must equal the centrifugal force on it, which gives this equation, in which on the left hand side, the first term is nothing but the gravitational force exerted by the sun on the satellite, and the second term is nothing but the gravitational force exerted by the earth on the satellite. And on the right hand side, it is nothing but the centrifugal force acting on the satellite in outward direction in which in the denominator r1 plus t is nothing but the distance of the satellite to the center of mass of the two body system which in this case is nothing but the center of the sun only as we have already talked about. Now the question is at what position should the satellite be such so that it follows the earth in its orbit around the sun. In other words, what is the value of d such that angular frequency of satellite's orbital motion matches that of Earth's orbital motion? So setting Earth's angular frequency omega 1 equal to satellite's orbital frequency omega 2 gives v1 by r1 is equal to v2 by r1 plus d. Putting in the value of v1 from equation 1 and solving for v2 gives v2 is equal to r1 plus d by r1 times under root g capital M by r1. Putting it in equation 2 gives this equation. Cancelling out g and m dash from both sides and shifting everything to the left, we finally get this equation. Now, the only unknown in this equation is d, mass of the sun capital M, mass of the earth small m, and the distance between the earth and the sun r1 are all known constants and can be looked up somewhere. All we need to do is to solve it for d. Now since it is an equation of degree 4, it would be quite cumbersome to solve it by hand. So let's solve this equation numerically using the well-known Newton Raphson's method. Before moving ahead and solving this equation numerically, let us first simplify it by multiplying throughout by r1 plus d square and d square and grouping the second and third term to get this equation. This form of equation will be easier to put into a numerical solver. Here I have pre-written a program to solve an equation of the form f of x is equal to 0 using Newton-Raphson's method. 
the equation we need to solve is the equation in the blue box in variable d but in program the equation is in variable x so we need to replace each d in our equation by x and enter here in the definition of f of x before that i've also written the value of capital m small m and r1 note that the r1 is in kilometers so that the value of d that we will get in the end will also be in kilometers next we have this nr function which takes as arguments the lhs of equation f of x initial guess of the root and finally the desired accuracy level for example in this case our answer will be correct up to four decimal places now as it runs it figures out the root iteratively as shown in the animation here on your screen you can watch some good videos out there on youtube to know more details by the way finally let's call this in our function parsing it our f of x initial guess say 100 you can keep it 10,000 or 10,000 or anything really and accuracy level up to four places say which was a default argument by the way then finally let's run the program and see what it gives okay so this is the output we get as you can see starting with the initial guess 100 kilometers after 33 iterations the root according to the program is this thing highlighted in the white which turns out to be 1.5219 million kilometers but is it correct let's verify It says L2 is located 1.5 million kilometers directly behind the Earth as viewed from the Sun. So the answer we got is correct. Quite great. By the way, on a side note, the ambitious James Webb telescope will be launched into Lagrange point 2 orbit itself. But why? Well, because if it were launched into any other Lagrange point, the radiation from Sun would dominate and add noise to the infrared radiation it actually intends to capture from the deep space. So Lagrange point 2 is the preferred orbit for many such satellites. It is quite great.